Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn and Way of Spears and I have a very different and exciting video for you today. So I have actually been chatting with the lovely Annie North who is both a writer and a YouTuber and we were discussing the ways that yoga can benefit writing practices and we decided to do a collaboration together based on how yoga can help your writing practices. Not only to help you break through writer's block and replenish your creativity, but also to relieve any tension and pain that you may be feeling in your wrists, your neck, your back, your shoulders, and maybe even your hips from sitting and writing all day. So I am going to be showing you a flow and a series of postures and poses that can help relieve some of that tension and pain in your body, as well as showing you a few different poses that can help you kind of break out of writer's block. Now, Annie is going to talk a little bit more about how yoga and writing can be so closely linked. Yoga is very much a practice as is writing. You really have to work hard at both of those if you want to move forward and succeed in your endeavors. Now, Annie is going to be talking about how yoga can teach you patience, how it can help you battle anxiety and self-doubt, how a yoga flow can actually encourage a creativity flow in your writing life, and also about how opening some of your blocked energy points may actually help you to unlock your creative potential and unblock you from your writer's block. Now, before I jump into this flow and showing you these postures and these poses, I do want you to know that I am not a doctor. I am in no way a physical therapist. So make sure that when you are testing out these poses for yourself, that you are always taking it nice and slow. You're being gentle and careful with your body. Remember, we do not want any pain in our yoga postures today. We just want to stretch. We want to unblock any creativity blocks that you may be feeling and just try to cultivate some creative energy. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. You're going to want to start off in a comfortable seated position. For me, this is usually on my knees or cross-legged, and we're going to start out just by rolling out the shoulders and then slowly and carefully rolling out the neck. What I like to do to warm up my neck is go back and forth a few times using my breath before I go all the way around so that I don't hurt my neck before it's warmed up. After your neck and your shoulders are warmed up, we're going to take our first child's pose. Now you can do this in a few different ways. If you keep your knees together, you're going to get more of a stretch through your back but if you move your knees apart to the edges of your mats, you're going to get more of a hip stretch. So pick whatever is more comfortable for you. If you have more hip pain, I recommend the wider legs. And if you want to give your back a nice stretch, then I recommend keeping your knees together for your child's pose. From child's pose, we're going to lift up into a tabletop position, and then we're going to do a few rounds of cat and cow. So you're going to want to drop your belly and lift your head into cow, and then round through the spine, really push away with your hands, puff up through your shoulders for cat. We're going to do a few rounds of this to really warm up your spine and it feels so good to just stretch everything out after you've been sitting at your desk for so long. From tabletop position now, you're going to inhale your left arm up into the air and then twist to look at your fingertips. Then exhale and thread your left arm under your right. Here you're going to be getting a great stretch for your shoulder, your neck, and your back. And you have a few variations with this right hand. You can either keep this hand beside your head, you can inhale it up into the air, 
or perhaps you want to take a bind and reach around your left side to grab hold of your thigh. This can be a very deep shoulder stretch, so just take it easy and be gentle with yourself. Now back in tabletop position, we're going to start with our wrist stretches. So start by just rotating each wrist in either direction. After your wrists are warmed up, you can experiment with turning your wrists in towards yourself. Be careful here, don't strain too much. And if this doesn't feel like a deep enough stretch, you can try to bend your elbows a little bit. After you're done with this one, we're actually going to flip our hands over and press down into the top of our hands. This is a really deep stretch, so take this carefully and just slowly. If it feels like you can handle it, you can flip both wrists over and gently press your weight into the top of your hands. When we're all finished with this, you can sit back on your knees, clasp your hands together, and just roll them out and relax them a bit. From a tabletop position, we're now going to push back into our first down dog. Make sure to spread your fingers out nice and wide and push down through the L's of each hand. And here you can just kind of walk out your legs and warm up to this pose. Downward Facing Dog is a wonderful pose to strengthen your hands and wrists, stretch out your legs, shoulders, and back, and increase full body circulation. If you're feeling frustrated or fatigued after a long day of writing or sitting at your desk, Downward Dog is a pose that can be both rejuvenating and energizing. From Downward Dog, you can walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Here we'll take forward fold. Remember to not overextend your knees here. And if you'd like a deeper stretch, you can take ragdoll by taking your hands to your elbows. Hang heavy here and feel free to sway side to side if that feels good to you. Then find some stillness and take a few deep breaths in and out. On a deep exhale, you may feel a deep stretch along your spine, which is great for working out any kinks you may have from hunching over your laptop all day. From forward fold, step, walk, or hop to the back of your mat. From a plank position, slowly lower yourself through your knees, chest, and chin. If you're more advanced, find a flow through Chaturanga Dandasana and into Upward Facing Dog. Otherwise, we'll take Sphinx Pose. On your belly, looking down at your mat, bring your arms in close to your sides. Spread your fingers and inhale as you press the forearms down into the floor and lift the head and chest up, keeping the neck in line with the spine. Sphinx opens the chest and strengthens the core body. For a deeper stretch, you can move into Upward Facing Dog. With your hands aligned beneath your shoulders, press your hands and the top of your feet into the mat, then lift your thighs up off the mat, using an inhale to expand through your chest for a nice back bend. From Sphinx or Upward Facing Dog, press back into Child's Pose, and then take a few rounds of Cat-Cow before we move into our hip opener. Today we'll be experimenting with Fire Log Pose. Many people have tight hips and legs, so take this stretch slowly and be gentle with yourself. Yoga is a practice after all, and it takes time to increase your flexibility. In a seated position, bring your left leg to parallel the top of your mat. You're then going to gently stack your right leg on top of your left leg with ankle to knee. Your knee may hover in the air and that's just fine. Apply gentle pressure, but don't strain yourself. We hold lots of emotion in our hips, so feel free to take a few minutes to just breathe through this pose and accept any thoughts or feelings that may occur to you, and then let them flow by. For a deeper stretch, feel free to lean forward any amount, but remember not to strain yourself. Continue to breathe. When you're ready, gently come out of this pose by shifting your right leg from side to side, massaging and relaxing the muscle. We'll then repeat fire log on your other side.
from your seated position, lift up into tabletop and then shift back into child's pose. From here, we will take rabbit pose. This pose can help release tension in your neck, back, and shoulders, and also feeds the nervous system with fresh blood and oxygen. From child's pose, reach back and grab your heels. Engage your core and round it down, placing the top of the head on the ground. Don't place too much weight in the head. Take care of your neck here. Lift your hips high, rolling forward like a wheel until your elbows are locked, feeling this wonderful opening of the back of the heart. To exit this pose safely, inhale and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Chin and head come up last, and you release your hands. If you choose to do so, you may seal your practice by bringing your prayer hands to your heart or third eye and bowing forward to thank yourself for this time you spent healing your mind and body. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and then go check out Annie's video and her channel. Both will be linked down below. So remember, if you enjoyed this, please go give her video a watch and give it some love as well. I truly hope you enjoyed this. I know it was incredibly different from what I usually do, but I think it's a really good way to introduce you to another side of me and another aspect of my life. I am an author and a writer and a creator, but I'm also a practicer of yoga and cultivating both a healthy yoga life and a healthy writing life really go hand in hand for me. If I am practicing yoga regularly, I do feel that I have much more creative energy and I'm in a much healthier mindset and that allows me to do more creative work and better creative work. So again, I do encourage you to try out even a few of these postures. If you don't wanna do the whole flow, that's fine. Maybe just do some wrist stretches, you know, some neck rolls, some shoulder stretches. And I really hope that this will help to maybe alleviate some of the tension and pain you've been feeling, especially if you're a writer or you're somebody that works at an office or you sit a lot during the day. This can really help for you. And then also, there are many other hip openers uh, that I'd be happy to share with you, but hip openers can release a lot of tension and emotion and anxiety. So doing hip opening stretches or chest and throat openers can also really help to kind of unblock any creativity blocks that you've been having or unblock your writer's block, which is something we could all use more of, right? So thank you guys so much for watching today. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.